Hello, what's up, my friends? My name is Josh. I'm your push coach. Excited to hang with you today. If you're hanging with me on YouTube, uh, I'm sure you're noticing I have a little bit more of a casual look today. Uh, I have not taken a shower today, so I'm still in my workout tank top and uh, my ball cap. So just hanging out today, putting out some good stuff. Just got off a one-on-one -on -one actually with someone from my inner circle and had some really, really, really good convos that just kind of inspired this thing that I want to talk about today, which is how fear is literally ruining our industry right now. And I want to talk about this because here's what I found. There's so many of us that in order to create the success we created, it was like, there is no plan B. We're going to stick our head down and do this thing. And I will never forget the mentality that I had. I literally told myself um, when I became a life coach, I said, listen, I'm going to give this thing five years. OK, I'm not an idiot. I'm not pretending that somehow, some way I'm going to figure out a whole new way of making money in the next three or four months or even in the next year. So, like, I'm literally going to give myself five years. It would take me four years to get a college degree and then probably a good year after that to go, you know, get a decent job or whatever. So I'm going to give myself the same amount of time to figure out this business thing. And because of that, I literally just put my blinders on. I put my head down and I said, I'm going to do everything John Maxwell tells me to do. I'm going to do anything and everything I can to like keep moving forward and see where it takes me. And I told myself over and over and over, Josh, five years. After five years, then you can look up. And if you don't feel like you have progressed to a point of like this making sense, then you have my permission to quit. But you can't quit <laughs> for this five years. You're going to put your head down and do this thing and see what happens. And I think that there are so many of us who created success that had that mentality, right? Now, let's walk through some seasons together. 2020 happens. There's a global pandemic. No one can leave their house and everyone is shopping online in the entire online industry blows up like nothing we have ever seen before. It was like we could print money in 2020 by just being on the internet talking about anything. And then on the backside of the pandemic, the world opens back up. And people are like, I don't want to shop online. I want to go shop in person because I can leave my house. And then the economy started to crash. And we had a couple bad things happen that have made online business the last year probably harder than it's ever been. You know, and I, I, I'm just going to throw that out there. I, I really do think the last year has been harder as far as making sales, as far as um, like getting people's attention. There's more people talking online than there's ever been before. And there's less money to go around because of the economy. And here's what I think happens because something is like took off and was so easy for like a year. I think in 2020, we were all like, look what I manifested. I manifested all of, like all of my hard work finally paid off. And some of that's true. Some of that's true, but you know what else is true? the entire world situation was working in our advantage and we all became spoiled little brats. <laughs> and then when 22 came around, 23 came around, 24 came around, we're like, what is wrong? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with business? What is wrong with people? What is wrong with the industry? And I'm here to just tell you nothing's wrong with anything other than the fact that like, this is just life. Sometimes you go through a season that is so good and so easy that it makes the next season feel worse than what it really is. And then you take a whole bunch of top leaders who are sitting around going, oh, this is harder than it's ever been before. I don't even know if I want to show up anymore. I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. And it compounds. And this is, this is why I wanted to do this episode today, because I sense an entire industry full of people that are sitting around starting to question and starting to have a plan B and a plan C and a plan D and are no longer really engaged on their plan A. 
and wondering why plan A isn't working as well as it used to. And we're essentially taking something that is already made. Like, like, let's just be real, guys. I'm not, I don't, I don't bullshit things. Okay. I don't sugarcoat things. It's harder this year. And that's just what it is. But we're taking something that's already hard and it, making it that much harder because instead of focusing on what we can do about it, instead of saying, okay, this is what I know I can control, so let me put my focus on that, everyone's just sitting around thinking about, talking about, and worrying about all the shit they can't control. And in a way, we are actually manifesting our own demise by focusing on all of the uncontrollables. And the reality is what we usually do as humans is we – make our problems bigger than everyone else's. So we're sitting there going, oh my God, what's wrong with my company? What's wrong with my business? What's wrong with my industry? And as, guys, every single company in the world has struggled. And unless, uh, I don't know, like there's probably some loan companies making a shit ton of money right now to just loan people money or whatever. But in general, when the entire economy is struggling and the entire market is down, I don't care how much personal growth you do. You're not an exception to that. The point of personal growth is not to like be an exception to the entire market and industry. It's to be the best in the market and in the industry. And the reality is the best in 2020 is not the same as the best in 2024. And that's just what it is. And instead of us sitting around whining and complaining about it and worrying about it, and making plan B, C, D, E, F, G, and H I J K L M N O P. We should instead be putting our heads down and saying, "How do we go about fixing this?" Because leaders are problem solvers. Leaders are people who show up when it's hard. And in my opinion, I have just seen so many leaders back down during this hardship. And again, that has made it even harder. I've been dealing with like a a tweak in my left shoulder for a while. And I've had so many times over the last 11 or 12 years of working out consistently five to six days a week where I got some type of an injury. And it's not that I couldn't do anything, but because I couldn't do everything I wanted to do, I kind of shut down a little bit, let it go to my head and stopped working out consistently and stopped eating the way I need to eat to look and feel the way I want to look and feel. And then six months down the road, you know, that injury recovers and I'm like, okay, let's get back to work and, and, and get back to where we were. And in the last couple of years, I've just done, I'm so proud of myself because while I haven't progressed as much as I would want to progress, I've done a really, really good job of managing my intention and my energy and my mindset in my consistency when I have had some injuries. So I've, I've had some recurring stuff where it like, you know, flares back up, tweaks back up. And instead of being like, oh man, I can't work out as much as I want to. Instead, I say, what can I do? Like, I can't lift as heavy as I want to lift right now, but I can still pick up 70% and I can still put in some reps and keep the consistency going so that when this injury is recovered, I don't have to make up some ground. I just have to keep going. And I think too many people in business are like, well, this isn't working as well as it did. So uh, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm not going to engage with my groups. I'm not going to engage with my father. I'm not going to engage, blah, 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 blah. And then you end up manifesting more work that you need to do to get back to where you were. And so this is what I would encourage you to do is first of all, this is something I walked a client through today. First of all, Stop worrying about the worst case scenario and instead full on address it. This is one of my favorite things to do. Okay. This is something that life coaching taught me. Um, I want you to write this down if you're not driving a car right now. Okay. Positivity is not the opposite of negativity. Positivity is not the opposite of negativity. Logic is. Too many times we try to fight positivity. Sorry, we try to fight negativity with positivity. And the reality is negativity is usually rooted in some type of like deep subconscious fear that we have that has been there for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. Throwing some positivity and pretending the world is perfect and pretending the world is okay is not going to fix that. 
it's not going to take it away. It's just literally the equivalent of I was sick over the weekend. Me and my wife both were, and it really sucked. But there was one day that I just needed to get some shit done, so I drank some caffeine. And I knew that it was a temporary fix. I wasn't like, ooh, I'm going to drink some caffeine, and then I'm and then I'm healed. I'm no longer sick. It was like, nah, I'm going to drink some caffeine, so for like an hour, it feels like I'm healed so that I can get some shit done. I needed to do some dishes and fix some food because me and my wife were both sick, but she was more sick than me, so I was trying to take care of her. So drank some caffeine to get through an hour. And this is what people do with positivity, okay? It's like caffeine. It's a short dose. And as long as you understand that, that's fine. You know, I take a short dose of positivity uh, several times a day. As long as you understand that it's not actually fixing anything, it's just a temporary Band-Aid, okay? So positivity isn't bad. It's not wrong, but it's just like caffeine. You know, it's there for a few hours and then you're going to have to take more. OK, so what's more powerful to do? This is what, what I would call true coaching is to actually work through the triggers and bring the darkness to light. So our fear is usually the unknown. OK, when you're a little kid, you're afraid um, to go to bed at night because the lights are out. But the reality is if you could sleep with the lights on, no one's afraid when the lights are on. We're only afraid when the lights are off, right? So like, let's just expose this shit for what it is. Um, and I ask myself this all the time. What is the actual worst case scenario? And I've asked myself this so many times when I'm like, oh, what's going on? What's going on with the industry? Is, is, is online business going to last? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, listen, dude, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe we had a good run and maybe sometime in the next couple of years, online business is done, which by the way, that's insane. Online business is not done, but I just like to go there. Like I just like to let my brain go there to see where it goes. Okay. If it crashes in a few years, what are we going to do? I'm like, well, honestly, at this point, I've learned enough skills and enough lessons that I could find a way to make $100,000 so that we could keep the lifestyle that we have. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to do as much of the traveling. We wouldn't We wouldn't have a lot of the extras, but we'd be able to pay for the house and the pool and the cars. Like We'd be fine. We wouldn't be as comfortable or as glamorous, but we'd be fine. Okay, so worst case scenario is the whole online business world goes away, which, by the way, again, is insane. Um, and you find a way to make six figures a year so that you can keep the lifestyle that you have. And, and, and you know, maybe you got to downgrade a couple cars. Maybe you got to downgrade a couple things. But, but, but no one's going to be homeless, right? And what this does is it almost gives me a safety net that allows me to go ahead and make that big leap that I know I need to make in order to actually grow things. You can't grow things sitting around looking at them. And fear is a constant paralyzer that tries to keep you stuck where you're at so that you won't take any action. And then guess what you do? When you do nothing, you end up manifesting the fear that everything is going to fall apart because you didn't hold anything together. And if you don't give something any attention, it is going to fall apart. If you stop watering your plants, they will die. That's how nature works. If you stop watering your business, it will die. If you stop nurturing your audience, if you start, if you stop creating engagement and doing what you need to do, it will die. And that's what it is. But if you water your plants, even if they're not as thriving as they used to be. They'll stay alive. And you can do some really awesome shit. And maybe it takes a little bit more um, work than it used to. And by work, I don't mean working more hours. I mean, like, you got to learn some new lessons. You got to adapt. You got to evolve. You got to grow. <laughs> because when the economy is good and everybody's buying, you don't have to be that smart to make money. When the economy is not as good and you want to make money, you need to be a little smarter than everybody else. You need to know how to stand out from the crowd. You need to have a specific message for a specific person because people are still spending money, my friends. I don't know if you noticed that, but Chick-fil-A still got a line around the parking lot. So people are still spending money. The question is, are you actually watering your garden or are you letting it die out of fear that it might die?
And so my challenge to you today is to just honestly, some of you just need to go get my book, The Best Version of You. <laughs> I give it away for free on my website because the whole point of the book is that when times are hard, the worst version of ourselves literally does not stand a chance. Okay. The only version of us that stands any type of a chance is the best version of you. And when you tap into becoming the best version of you, focusing on what you can control, you end up creating movement and you end up creating momentum and good shit happens. But you have to remember that good shit doesn't happen because we woke up today and wanted something good to happen. Good shit happens because we work to plant the seed, to water the seed, and actually give it time to grow something above the ground. And I just think that there are so many people right now that grew some shit in 2020, and their shit isn't growing like it used to. And instead of celebrating and appreciating and loving what you have as a result of that season, just sitting around whining and complaining that it's not that what you currently have working or going or doing isn't as good as what it was. And I just, just want to encourage you and challenge you to give yourself permission to just go for the things you want in life. To just fucking go for it. Because at the end of the day, what is the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? Two years from now, you change your mind and decide, ah, oh, that wasn't worth the time and energy. Okay, cool. But did you grow in the process? And, and, and so this is something that John Maxwell taught me. There is no right or wrong path. There is the path of growth. And then there is the path of <laughs> the opposite of growth, whatever you want to call that. Okay. Some people would call it, you know, like the, the light, the dark, the shadow, like, like whatever you want to call it. But you've got, you've got the path of growth, or as I like to call it, the path of abundance or the path of scarcity. So you can either decide to climb the mountain or you can slide back down the mountain. But ask yourself this, and I ask myself this all the time when I'm going through some type of a hard season or even just like a hard moment or whatever. Is your life any better off when you slide back down the mountain? Is your life any better off? No, it's not. Is there anybody listening to this that would go back to not having ever pursued a business, not having ever read any? Is there anyone that's like, oh, man, I regret all those books that I read. That was a waste of time. <laughs> I regret all those people I connected with and added value to. What a waste of time. And so what I have just found, my friends, is that Life doesn't always happen the way I want it to happen, but when I am in full pursuit of becoming the best version of me, my purpose of helping other people, and my passion of building a business, everything else in life goes a lot better. And when you stop growing yourself and your purpose and your passion, it tends to bleed out into everything else. And so I see a lot of people right now that are just letting fear and overwhelm and anxiety get the best of them, which means it's getting the best of their business. And a lot of times that ends up to it getting the best of their relationships, their marriage, their it gets the best of everything. Because when you're not growing, nothing in your life is growing. And one of my favorite things about business is it's always forced me to be in a state of growth, which has just naturally led to being better at everything else I do in life. So please don't give in to fear. And I, I'm like, really, man, I hope they're listening. I'm really calling out to top leaders right now. Get the fuck back to work. <laughs> Stop sitting around and looking at the stadium that's quieter than it was and go make some fucking noise. Stop sitting around complaining that people aren't as engaged as they used to be. Okay, cool. They That might be true, but what are you doing about it? Leaders rise up in the hardest times and we get creative we come up with even better solutions. We go find more people. <laughs> but I can promise you this. If you're just sitting, staring at your stadium going, oh, people don't cheer as much as they used to cheer. People don't play as much as they used to play. Guess what you're doing? 
one, you're adding to the lack of engagement by being an unengaged yourself. Two, you're not taking the work to re-engage them. And three, you're not finding new people that could have been creating a new surge of engagement. You are manifesting your own worst fear by feeding into it, by thinking about it too much instead of asking, what do I need to do to rebuild things? So I hope this encourages you. I hope it challenges you. I hope you know my heart that I just I love you so much that I want to see good for you. And I will tell you from personal experience, worrying about things, being overwhelmed about things has never led to any good in my life. But when I focus on what can I control, who can I become in the process? What do I want to chase? Who do I want to help? What do I want to do? Somehow, some way, good shit always happens. All right. I love you so much. I believe in you so much. I care about you so much. I am working behind the scenes on putting together um, a big summit of hope. This is something we did um, during the pandemic to just raise money for charity, but also to just bring together top leaders, create a ton of energy, a ton of momentum, and just feed life and light into people. So be watching for emails for that. If you're not subscribed to my email list, go to joshcoats.com and just get any of the free gifts that I have on my website. Lots of free gifts on my website. Just grab any one of those and that'll get you on the email list and you'll get the other reminders. Um, we're currently um, taking... Uh, build, I should say building a wait list for our next round of launch for our life and performance coach certification. That is one of the ways we help people to um, learn true coaching, which is understanding how your, your limiting beliefs and your feelings and your actions are all interconnected. And when you understand how to work through those things, you end up setting yourself free from old patterns and old cycles. But it also is something that we have a lot of leaders sign up for because we have a lot of leaders that are like, listen, I know how to show up for me. Sometimes I suck at getting other people to show up. And the whole point of the life coaching certification is that when you learn true coaching, you know how to help other people to unlock those things that are holding them back. So you can join the wait list at joshcoats.com. There's a spot if you scroll down that says uh, life coach certification. You can click on that. Get on the wait list. I love you so freaking much. I believe in you. You were born to do amazing things. And everything you need is already living on the inside. And all the resources you'll ever need are right under your freaking nose. I love you so much. Have an amazing day. Please make sure and go share this specific episode. I don't always ask this, but please let's make this episode go viral because we need some people to hear this message. Okay, so go share it in your team pages. Go send it to your success partners. We need to get this message out. I love you so much. We'll see you soon, friend. Bye.